Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineer Math Channel. Sa video na to ay ituturo ko sa inyo ang power factor correction. So kung gusto niyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so this time ay ituturo ko naman sa inyo ang power factor correction. So, meron naman akong previous video about power factor as well as yung iba't ibang concepts about easy power analysis, right? So, hindi nyo pa yung napapanood, isililink ko na lang para ma-check nyo para makasabay kayo dito sa mga concept at formula na i-discuss natin sa video na to. Okay? So, dumako na ngayon tayo sa power factor correction. So, ano ba ang power factor correction? So, define natin. So, power factor correction is the process of increasing the power factor without altering the voltage or current to the original load. So, ginagawa natin itong power factor correction specifically para mapataas yung power factor sa isang circuit. Kasi nga, base dun sa video ko about AC power, kapag meron tayong mababang power factor, close to zero, so yung range ng power factor is from zero to one, right? Ang tendency is, yung real power na nakoconsume natin in watts is mababa, which is pangit. So, ang goal natin ngayon dito sa power factor correction is mapataas yung ating power factor in such a way para ma-maximize natin yung real power sa isang uh, given circuit. Kasi yung real power lang naman yung pinaka-useful power, right? So, meron kasi tayong iba't ibang power which is na-discuss ko na. Like yung apparent power, reactive power, real power, etc. Okay? So, mapapatas natin yung power factor kahit hindi natin i-alter yung voltage or current doon sa original load. lang tayong gagawin. Particularly, magdadagdag tayo ng isang component parallel doon sa load, which is a capacitor nga. So, usually kasi yung mga appliances natin sa bahay is inductive in nature. For example, washing machine, air conditioner, refrigerator. So, lahat yon nag operate in a lagging power factor. So, kapag lagging power factor, inductive yung load, right? Base dun sa video ko. So, kapag ganun yung case, ibig sabihin, either in between 0 to 1 yung power factor niya. So, kapag nag-add tayo ng additional component doon sa load, let's say a capacitor, maka-cancel out nung capacitive load na yon yung inductive component ng load. So, parang magka-cancel sila. Kasi, di ba, negative of each other yung sign ng ating inductive at capacitive reactance, right? So, kapag nag-add tayo ng additional capacitor, mapapababa yung pagiging inductive ng load natin. Ang tendency is magiging almost resistive na siya. So, so therefore, parang makakancel out yung reactive power at parang magiging mostly resistive yung ating load. Which is, tataas nga yung power factor. Okay? So, I-illustrate natin yung sinabi kong concept na yon by a figure. So, suppose meron tayo ditong inductive load which is represented by a series resistor and inductor. Okay? So, nakasupply tayo dito, let's say, sa AC source voltage with a value of V. Tapos, merong dadaloy na current, of course, dito sa inductive load natin na I sub L. Okay? So, therefore, i-expect natin na laging power factor nga tayo kasi inductive load. So, kung i-represent natin yung, yung angle difference between dun sa voltage vector at yung current vector I sub L is ito yung ating illustration. So, mapapansin nyo, itong voltage natin tsaka itong I sub L, yung I sub L is naglalag dito sa voltage by an angle theta 1. Right? Kapag inductive, right? The current lags the voltage. Okay? Now, kung gagawin natin yung sinabi kong pagdagdag ng additional capacitor in parallel dito sa inductive load, so ito yung figure natin, same inductive load pa rin na series resistor at inductor, meron tayong tinagdag na capacitor parallel dito sa inductive load. So, nakakonek pa rin sila dito sa same voltage V, but this time yung total current I will be divided into two. So, yung sum nitong IL tsaka IC, yung IL yung current pa rin na dadalaw dito sa inductive load, yung IC yung current na dadalaw dito sa capacitor, yung total current I bale is equal to the sum ng I sub L plus I sub C. Okay, so kung i re natin ngayon yung vector representation ng current at voltage, 
So, wala tayong babagwin sa voltage, right? Kasi, parallel connection tayo. So, same lang din yung magiging voltage. But, this time, so, ito yung original natin na IL, right? Same lang din dito sa figure sa taas. Pero, nung nag-add tayo ng kapasitor, so, nagkaroon tayo ng added current, which is dapat 90 degree leading dito sa voltage, right? Remember yung uh, concept about capacitive load. Current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. So, 90 degree to. So, kung kukuha ay natin bale yung total I o yung current na to sa circuit, applying yung concept sa pag-add ng vector. So, kung i-add natin yung IL plus IC, so parang vector sila, right? So, pwede natin i-apply yung pag-add ng vector. So, i-coconnect ko yung tail nitong IC dito sa head nitong IL. Right? So, parang nilipat ko lang siya dito. And then, from the original position nila, i-draw natin yung vector na to papunta dito sa head this time ng IC. So, parang ito yung magiging I natin, yung total current. So, mapapansin nyo, ano na yung naging phase difference nitong V at nung I, yung total current natin, naging theta 2, which is lumiit, right? So, therefore, kapag lumiit yung ating phase difference, doon sa voltage shot current, ibig sabihin nun, gumanda yung power factor. Kasi diba yung power factor natin is cosine theta, right? Yung theta na tong dalawa. So, kung mas mataas yung theta natin, so, ibig sabihin, sa cosine kapag mas mataas yung angle, right? Ano siya? Mababa yung kanyang value. Pero, kung lumiliit yung ating angle, Sin. kapag hinanap natin yung cosine nun is tataas yung ating value. So, therefore, tataas yung ating power factor kasi nga cosine theta is equal to power factor, right? Okay? So, yun yung goal natin. Mapababa yung phase difference din doon sa voltage at current. Kasi nga kapag mababa yung phase difference, ano ibig sabihin nun? Magiging almost in phase yung voltage at current. So, therefore, parang resistive lang yung load or in nature, parang in phase yung voltage at current. So, okay. parang real power yung laging nakoconsume natin dun sa circuit. Okay, mababa yung reactive power. Okay? Now, ang goal natin dito is mahanap yung value ng kapasitor, yung either capacitive reactance niya or mismong kapasitance na i-coconnect in parallel dito sa, sa ating inductive load para nga mabago or mag-improve yung ating power factor. Okay? So, para magawa yon, bumalik tayo sa concept ng power triangle based on sa previous video ko. So, kung meron tayong power triangle, sa so meron tayong right triangle, so yung hypotenuse is S, yung isang leg na adjacent dito sa theta, o yung ating power angle is P, tapos yung Q is yung reactive power natin na opposite sa theta. Okay? So, ito yung mga formula na discuss natin sa previous video ko. So, power factor is equal nga sa cosine theta, so, S is equal to, using Pythagorean theorem, square root ng P square plus Q square. P is equal to S cosine theta. And Q is equal to S sine theta. Okay? Now, kung bubuo tayo ng panibagong power triangle, this time, meron tayong magiging original triangle with apparent power S1 and real power P at reactive power Q1. So, ito yon. Yung original, yung pinakamalaking right triangle. Okay? With theta 1, original theta 1, yung phase difference between the current at voltage doon sa circuit. So, ito yung amount niya, theta 1. Okay? Pero nga, dahil magkoconnect tayo ng parallel capacitor, ang tendency is bababa yung ating reactive power to Q2. Ito, bababa. Magiging, ito na lang yung ating magiging power triangle. Yung mas maliit na to. So, kung bumaba yung ating reactive power to Q2, so parang meron tayong naging difference, right? So, from Q1, bumaba siya ng QC hanggang maging ito na lang siya yung Q2. Okay? So, ito yung difference ng ating reactive power QC. Ngayon, mababago rin yung ating apparent power S2. So, ito yung bago nating hypotenuse. And then, hindi natin babaguhin dito yung P. So, constant lang siya. Kasi nga yung goal natin, di ba? Mababago yung ating power factor, pero hindi natin babaguhin yung mismong real power. So, aside sa nabagong S2 tsaka Q2, bababa rin yung ating theta. 
or yung phase difference between sa current at voltage. So, base dun sa explanation ko kanina, pag mas bumaba, tataas na yung power factor kasi cosine theta is power factor. Okay? So, base dito sa ating power triangle na to, i-derive natin yung formula. So, originally, yung ating Q1, kung i-derive natin yung original Q1, equal siya, referring dito sa triangle na to, yung pinakamalaki, pwede siyang P times tan theta 1, right? Kasi tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, right? So, parang Q over P is equal to tan theta 1. So, opposite sa theta 1 is itong Q, tapos adjacent sa theta 1 is itong P. So, lagyan natin ng subscript. So, Q1, P1, Q1, P1. Now, kapag nag-add tayo ng kapasitor, referring naman dito sa panibagong power triangle, Ano yung magiging bagong Q2? Same formula pa rin. This time, P1 tan theta 2. Okay, so kahit pala hindi natin lagyan ng subscript itong P, kasi hindi naman natin binago. So, P lang. Okay? Ngayon, ano yung value nitong QC? QC now will be equal to, base dito, Q1 minus Q2. Right? Base dito sa figure. Okay? Ngayon, pag sinabsitute natin, we have ano si Q1? P tan theta 1 minus ano si Q2? P tan theta 2. So, factoring ko na lang tong P tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 times P. Ito si QC. So, bali itong QC yung reactive power nung dinagdag nating kapasitor. So, alam natin, using yung formula, Sa reactive power, pwede siyang VRMS square over XC. Yung XC yung reactance ng ating kapasitor. Or, ano ba yung formula natin for reactance? 1 over 2 pi FC, right? Or, itong 2 pi F, pwede siyang omega. So, VRMS square over 1 over omega C. Or, ilan na to? Tataas sila, right? So, VRMS square omega C. Ito yung ating QC. Okay? So, solving for C, we have dividing Divide. both sides by VRMS squared omega. C is equal to QC over VRMS square omega. Okay? But, QC kanina ano? P times tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2. So, therefore, yung formula natin is pwede ring P tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 over VRMS squared omega. Okay? Sinubstitute ko tong QC in terms of this. P tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2. So, ito yung value ng ating kapasitance na i-add para makorek yung power factor ng circuit. Okay? Now, kung gusto nyo ring i-derive yung I-add nating inductor para mabago yung power factor. Pwede rin yun. Pero, hindi ko na i-derive. Bigay ko na lang sa inyo. So, QL is equal to VRMS squared over this time XL, right? So, VRMS squared this time, ano naman yung XL? 2 pi FL. Or, 2 pi FL is omega. So, parang VRMS squared over omega L. Okay? So, therefore, we have L is equal to VRMS square over omega QL. Okay, where QL, this time is para pa rin, Q1 minus Q2. Okay, so in case lang na may ganitong problem. So, para ma-illustrate natin yung concepts at formula for power factor correction, ay mag-solve tayo ng example. So, when connected to a 120 volt RMS 60 hertz power line, a load absorbs 4 kilowatts at a lagging power factor of 0 0.8. Find the value of capacitance necessary to raise the power factor to 0 0.95. Okay, so apply natin dito yung formula for the capacitance C as, so kanina, equal yon sa QC over omega V RMS square or pwede rin yung P times tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 over omega v rms squared. 
So, it's up to us kung ang gagamitin natin. So, ang given kasi is, meron tayong VRMS na 120 volts. Meron tayong 60 hertz. So, siya si frequency, right? 60 hertz. Tapos, absorbs 4 kilowatts. So, yung 4 kilowatts, siya yung P or yung real power. And then, laging power factor of 0 0.8. So, yung power factor 1, yung original power factor is 0 0.8. Tapos, hanapin daw natin yung capacitance necessary to raise the power factor to 0 0.95. So, kapag nag tayo ng capacitor, meron tayong dapat bagong power factor or power factor 2 na 0 0.95. So, pwede natin gamitin itong pangalawang formula. Kasi, meron tayong P. So, makukuha natin yung theta 1 tsaka theta 2, right? Kasi yung power factor is equal to cosine theta. So, power factor 1 is equal to cosine theta 1 tapos power factor 2 is equal to cosine theta 2. Right? I-arc cosine lang natin. So, sige. Theta 1 will be arc cosine of 0 0.8. So, using calculator, ilan yan? 36.87 degree. Tapos, itong cosine theta 2, i-arc cosine natin. R cosine, yung power factor 2 is 0 0.95. Anong value nga? 18.19 degree. So, meron na tayong P, theta 1, theta 2. Meron na tayong VRMS. Tapos, yung omega value is 2 pi F, right? So, meron naman tayong frequency na 60. So, plug in na lang natin. So, C is equal to P. So, P is what? 4,000 watts times tan. Theta 1 is 36.87 degree. Minus tan theta 2 is... 18.19 degree over so omega so 2 pi f is 60 times vrms squared so 120 squared so using calculator it is equal to what approximately 310.5 microfarad Okay, so therefore, ito yung value ng kapasitor na i-coconnect natin in parallel dun sa load para makorek yung power factor from 0 0.8 to 0 0.95 given these conditions ng ating circuit. Okay? Okay, so I think that's it for this video, power factor correction. So, sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panunood.